Uh, I suppose one, whenever you're asked to kind of speak about my open access story, it all feels very kind of self-congratulatory and patting on the back. Some of the things I might claim, maybe not, there might be a correlation, but there's no absolute manner that I can say, oh, this is definitely the reason why a particular invite came in or I was invited to co-author with somebody. But to start off my open access story, well, in terms of my research profile, uh, and Julia's given that mainly, it mainly involves international human rights law um, within, uh, within our global society. Um, nationally, I would research on issues uh, relating to direct provision for asylum seekers within Ireland, but would also do that quite comparatively with the United Kingdom, the European Union, and uh, other international comparators. Um, I'm really interested in law, how legal systems work, and um, uh, also how I view law as simply a subset of politics. That law is about political decision, different way, different means of political decision, but that, that's what I feel it's about. And then how a little jurisdiction, a very small jurisdiction within international terms, where is our place in the world and what can we in our jurisdiction maybe contribute to best practice or what can we contribute to maybe providing warnings to other states in terms of how they comply with their international human rights obligations. So that's my kind of broad research area. Um, the main reason that I focus on open access publishing, um, one, I have a deep suspicion of academic journals a really deep suspicion of academic journals, they attempt to confine my free work, or sorry, my work which is paid for by Irish society, they confine that behind paywalls to only those who are privileged enough to pay for it. I will not publish in a journal that does not have at least a green open access, um, open access policy, uh, i.e., uh, as, as you'd mentioned, the publishing the pre-proofs of, um, of the journal article, book chapter, etc. Um, so I'm paid by the people of Ireland, the vast majority who would not be able to access the work that they are paying me to do um, um, behind publisher paywalls. Um, I do work which publishers sell for a profit. As all of us know when we submit journal articles, we are not paid for that. Why are we contributing to the profit of very big organizations. I have a deep, deep problem with that. However, it doesn't stop me from submitting to peer review journal articles because we have to play the game. Um, and also obligations to other persons in the academy. And you mentioned persons in the Global South in particular. Um, and, and yes, some of my work, I would get requ email requests for can I have the final version of, uh, of an article that they, persons had discovered through UCD uh, repository, and then I'm able to provide them, and well, I really don't care about copyright. Um, <laughs> what benefits then, um, and here's a self-promotion bit, uh, what benefits then do I think open access has had for me? Um, well, one, I don't feel comfortable talking about impact. Imposter syndrome, which everyone suffers from, can kind of grab a hold, in a hold of us, and we sometimes might be comfortable actually acknowledging the impact our work, uh, our open access work may have. Uh, in earlier years, I blogged extensively. Um, and since that's not recognized as, as proper outputs as such, I have made sure to refocus my efforts into more traditional publishing, uh, despite my concerns with traditional publishing. In the publication of a co-authored book with um, Dr. Tanya Nivertala of DCU and Dr. Catherine O'Sullivan of uh, University College Cork, um, I was able to provide publishers round hall with extensive written samples of my work, just in hyperlinks to the open access um, repository here in UCD, which, as it was my first book I was engaging with, it showed them that, look, I, am, I can write well. I can communicate well, uh, or at least I hope I can, but I think I can. Um, by utilizing UCD Research Repository, as well as um, some of the more evil ones, SSRN and academia.eu, my work has gotten exposure it otherwise would not have gotten. I do think it was my work that was available on UCD Research Repository that got me an invite as an academic expert to the Constitutional Convention in 2014. 
Um, from reading my open access work, um, NGOs, non-governmental organizations and civil society organizations have invited me on to a variety of working groups. Um, I have presented at the United Nations um, on some aspects of my uh, open access work. Um, and my open access work on beyond, I suppose, kind of the legal sphere, um, and since I see all laws politics anyway, um, my open access work has led to opportunities um, which I don't think I otherwise would have had. Um, opportunities to draft legislation, the Immigration Reform Regularization of Residency Status Bill 2016, which attempted to draw a line under some of the state's poor responses to the rights of asylum seekers and grant a residency status for those who were in the system for a very long time. The bill didn't succeed, but it was through my open access work that parliamentarians in the, in the Shannon um, got in contact with me, asked me to work with them on a number of different projects culminating in uh, the Immigration Reform Res uh, uh, Regularization of Residency Bill. Um, and while it wasn't successful, it nevertheless, I suppose, gave me an opportunity to hone my own communication of key points, communication beyond just kind of core legal audiences, um, and, and that then led to other, um, other opportunities to present before Oireachtas, uh, in Oireachtas Committee um, and to engage with non-governmental organizations, civil society organizations, in attempting to advance the rights of asylum seekers within Ireland. So nationally inter and internationally, my open access work has often been stated as the reason for why I was invited. If that had been behind the paywall of a journal article, um, I, I don't think I would have been, uh, I, I think there's a good chance I would not have necessarily have been contacted. Um, so in conclusion, I think open access has permitted me to um, input into policy making in a way that otherwise I probably would not have um, had an opportunity to. Um, it has gotten my name out there as someone who has expertise in particular fields involving international human rights law and asylum and refugee law. Um, and I hope it's added something to the debate, even if others may not accept fully my arguments or not accept at all the arguments. Um, and all in all, I also think open access has given an opportunity for the general public, as well as students in this institution and other institutions, to, I hope, think deeper about issues, issues that I think are important to discuss. Um, and even if they disagree at me, with me, that at least from accessing my open access publications, they might at least think about a little deeper um, and for a bit longer about their own views on various issues impacting upon human rights broadly. So that's my 15 minute, 10 minutes of self-promotion. Thank you.